Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. If you want to really learn how to make a realistic anime interpretation, in this case when the armor tight and breaks the wall, then you came to the right place. Remember, this is going to be a very technical and quite advanced tutorial because I'm going to showcase a whole scene in a really fast way. But I will explain everything and you will learn really cool tricks about art direction, vectors, different types of simulations. So stay tuned and enjoy the tutorial. Guys, do you want to join a really nice server? We have tons of different channels. We have effects, modeling, loop, dev, compositing. We will have resources for every type of discipline. So hop in and have fun. Okay guys, so welcome to this setup. So the first thing we have to keep in mind here is that I usually load in all my assets, right? These are my assets and I have three. One of them is the Titan. As you can see, we have an Alembic. You can laugh at the animation because basically what we only need is to have the camera in position, right? So what I did is to unpack it and save it as a BGO.sc. This is because I want to have everything in this file format, I usually like to work uh, outside of Alembic as much as I can. Obviously, importing an Alembic is very useful, but manipulating these files is way better for Houdini. Anyways, so what I did is to convert this and then shift it somewhere where I need it. So I set the frame 101 uh, and then I grouped the leg, right? What I did is to transfer this group and then blast it out. So we only have this leg because I don't need all the, all the moving parts of the Titan, it's not necessary at all. Any polyfill this. I added a trail node so we can have velocities as you can see here. I will toggle this back down here and then I save this again. Why? Because this process is a little bit demanding as you can see. So, what it is is to save it and now I have a fully functional leg working flaws. You can ignore these vectors, I only have them very high. That's the only reason we see them like that. I also did a connectivity with an to delete a Titan and a Titan in order to export it to um, to Clarice because I rendered this in Clarice, which I'm not going to show in this tutorial, but it's a nice software that you should try eventually. So this is the Titan. The card is basically only an Alembic, which I converted back to polygons inside uh, Houdini. I modeled this in Blender because I'm not real a modeler and I don't know how to use Maya uh, for as a modeling tool. Of course, to render I use it all the time. It's a simple setup. I I try to keep the logic of the world and nothing intersects. There's not a single piece here intersecting and this will work okay for my um, rigid body simulator. Then we have a barrel uh, setup which I created. These are all procedural. The, the idea of, the, of this tutorial is not to get into these procedural stuff, it's to get into the effects. But basically what this creates is, uh, well, it's a procedural barrel. It's nothing more than that. Now, so let's go where we want. Then the next step is to create a collision. I always create the collisions on a separate section and I usually color code it uh, with a green color, right? So let's hop in. This can be a little bit hard to comprehend because what we usually do is to create a, um, a collision source and that's about it. We export the polygons and the volumes. But in this case, what I wanted to do is obviously always at a timeline in case you want to have subframes and I have the polygons here it is nothing more than this the polygons and then I created a wrangle where I basically uh, got the length of the velocity hence the magnitude and I created a divergence based on these parameters from 0 0.1 to 40 because maybe the, the velocity goes to 40 uh, it goes from 0 to 1 and then I multiply it by 6 this will create a divergence field which I will put it right here right so as far as I'm concerned, this is actually pretty cool. The diversions, what it creates is a positive diversion expands the volume and a negative diversion contracts the volume. It's pressure, basically. If we have uh, a drawing like this one, uh, where this is high pressure and this is low pressure, where is going to go the, the smoke? The smoke is going to go into this direction to fill this pocket. So in the volume rasterize, what I did is to create a huge velocity field, which I might consider increasing this expansion 
push and fill as well. But this is a velocity, uh, basically it's only the velocity, which we already have here. Rasterize with this function, so I control the particular scale and the coverage scale divided by four to have a more controllable environment. And what I did here is that the scale is very, very big. I can increase it even more. Why this works? Because now the velocity is huge compared to the, to the foot. So it creates like a big drag motion, which is awesome for big scale situations. That's why I wanted to, to move these, like split them and then merge it again. And then I uh, time blend in order to basically, uh, well, you know, when you we need the sub steps. These are the collisions. There's nothing more here. Then we, we went and created a smoke solver. This is very simple. We have the leg with all the velocities. We made a time shift with a frame I liked. And then I have this group, which I blasted down in order to get this. And I match side this in the center. Why? Because I'm going to uh, create all my vectors and velocities from the center. It was like working from the center, basically. Then I create a motion, I mean, a mountain node, which creates this kind of awful shape. And I transform everything to zero. Then all my velocities will be normalized based on my position. I usually add this, which in this case doesn't make any difference. And I set the density to one. You can see here that we have both attributes right here. This is normalized, so every vector is equals to one in magnitude. Then I match size this with a restore transform on the X form, which I did here. I save this and I output back that. This is because um, if I didn't do this, my vectors would be all pointing to the zero, zero, zero coordinates. And I want this to go from the center. Then I did some scattering and then I did a simple wrangle. This wrangle is basically I remove a percentage of points from time. This is so I can control the, the emission. I create an, an, some velocity turbulence and I rasterize this. And so you might say, okay, this source is very, very, very awful. So what I ended up doing is to create a volume bob where I added a little bit of detail. The detail is created by a turbulent noise added to the position and then into volume sample file based on the primitive name, which is density. And then I output it back to the volume output. I also multiplied uh, my now distorted uh, volume by our density field, which was one, see? So I only did this in order to fill out, fill in a little bit of the gaps, but I could totally just delete this. It's, I know, it's artistic direction, you know? You can do whatever you want here. So I only um, I only visualize in density. This is, oh, okay, I'm not, sorry. So I'm not visualizing the density, I'm visualizing the speed right now. And I convert all this into BDB. This should be said to that way, exposed as So this is the velocity, I mean, this is the density and the other way around with the velocity. It doesn't make sense. It's, it, you don't need to uh, use this now, this optional. Then I have a simple switch. This is an old trick. Many of us create this in order to just use it when we need it. In this case, uh, I start my simulation on frame one, uh, 1021. So let's hop in. This is only this source. This is what I did before, which I showed you. The density and the velocity is only set to 0.3. This part is, well, I have a, a maximum uh, bonding box set to this shape because I don't need to actually uh, use all my, my sides here. I didn't, well, I could have used this ground, but I opted for this one. I should delete or either this one or remove this one. It's the same. It doesn't affect the overall simulation. So here is the important part where I created a scalar with the same size of the velocity, but I'm creating a scalar, not a vector. I'm only reference the size of the of the of this field. Then I'm creating the same way I created before the magnitude of the velocity. I'm creating the magnitude of the velocity, but inside the ops. So why do I need this every single frame? Because I can use in this gas disturbance, for example, my speed as a, as a control field, as a mask, and I could change these values all around based on these uh, fields, which I didn't change. Uh, it, I could be more precise with this, but it, at the end of the day, uh, it's not that huge of a deal. And I did the same for the, well, in fact, I didn't do the same here. Pardon, uh, <laughs> I, I forgot. Uh, but the confinement uh, control field is already good for this. I use a 
scale of three. And here I just use these as these uh, values, which I'm uh, basically reducing over time. And let's see how this looks. Let me lower the resolution to uh, around four times and let's uh, simulate. As you can see we have the overall expansion. I'm visualizing the collision. You can visualize it here, right? And we have the effect of the bull. Oh, this is the effect of the turbulence with the velocity and we also have the effect of the divergence and when the foot rises we will have the effect of the velocity of the collision right here we should see some drag eventually yes we're seeing some drag here put around here which is pretty cool so you might ask why is it necessary the versions feel well it's not necessary but it could add like a nice expansion when the foot uh, collides with the floor um as you can see i'm not merging any kind of rbd it is not necessary it's you should focus on what camera sees in this case we will only be seeing this right i'm cutting everything that i don't really need and um, the collision should go always on the force if you're using a sparse solver these are the the common on, you, you basically use a collision then you add the dimensions to copy you have to set the attributes here and that's about it i will go back and set this to one and let's see how it looks once i import this i visualize this i convert this into pdb i merge all the values into a into a vector see you see here back three before we have everything split and then i uh, write this as a 16-bit vector float so it's easier on your hard drive or ssd or you have and i said this this is my my high res i think it looks quite nice and then i can control this a little bit more i should have some lights here and there let me check yes i do have some light and let's go back again here so as you can see it looks pretty cool remember the background uh, what i did here i'm going to show you the lambic right here let's hop in so i imported the the camera from the from the maya uh, and then i have some references uh, this is a file sequence of pngs and I had to some kind of weird offset here so i created this easy function to uh, offset the the basically the background which is loading this sequence right here right okay so <clears throat> so let's go to the dirt before the rvd because the rvd is very hard and we need a lot of time the dirt is also kind of hard that it's not so long so let's go inside the dirt uh, let's not simulate because this will take a lot and let's see what I did. This is the whole setup. It's not that lot. It's not a lot, but it has a kind of a complex situation going on. So let's go into the leg. We import it again, right? Here we go. This is the leg, the cut leg. And what is going on here is that I'm subdividing this. And I'm also trailing back again, but with a central velocity, central difference. It takes the frame on top and the frame at the back, and it's merging them. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> and the other paint, this is the most interesting part where you are going to like a lot because you can actually add direct where you want to have for example the trace when the talon lifts on in the, in the sky right so i'm going to use a time shift for this we do have our mask right here which we can see and i'm using a scatter essentially where we have these um, previous uh, masks we can see it here and then what i'm going to do is to interpolate this based on these two attributes which is basically the number of the primitive and the location in the view space between that primitive since these are the same here and here it's going to interpolate perfectly i usually use this method um, before using what i uh, what i call the point of form right this is faster it's perfect it's not more precise it's perfectly precise and what i did here is to have an idea over the points and a p scale of 0 0.004 this is very important for a grind simulation which in this case is a pop grind simulation if i'm not mistaken let's see so i also created uh, the talon source which is the bottom surface of the foot uh, which i have the talon base here is the talon base here right uh, which is basically this one and then i also have this again and i also have this again but why do i have three times this because first of all i want to have an offset of one as you can see here we have an offset of one frame let's go to a more interesting or more appealing frame so perhaps this one as the foot moves we can see that the points also change these are the previous and these are the normal what i'm doing here is to actually lurping between these two guys between the original position and the last position i'm going roughly here because what i want to have is since i always have the the same id points here 
here and here is to have two different positions where I can basically add them together. This is quite complex because the animation has a like it stops in a, in a moment and it kind of glitches out right here the trails. I'm trying to create the trails right here. I'm using a resample to have more points. I'm using a point bob with uh, the amplitude set to the cure view of the resample and well it's a simple turbulent noise. There's nothing more to say. This it is on 3D. Then I'm also using another example with interpolating curves and the tangent. Remember this: the tangent is what goes along the curve is set to B because I am going to control later on. You will see how I create these velocities. So I'm using the old trick where I can control where they appear and where they disappear the points, and I'm also doing this out B transfer. This is very useful. Remember when I said that this has a problem with the velocities? Okay, so check it this out. I created a way of interpolating the whole shape into um, like a source where I can transfer velocity. So I have these points with in time blending. This is important because I want sub steps and I'm trailing them a lot. So if I do a time shift, it will calculate again and we will see that we have this shape, which is obviously with an add node. And then what I did is since these are all the frames, we resample this and we smooth it out a lot. And let's see, let's see what we got here. We do have, or we should be having some velocity. Yes, right here. These are the velocities. So let's watch them. Well, we should watch the velocities without points, right? Or with this node, in fact. So as you can see, all the velocities are quite smooth right here. And we can transfer this with it on our sources. So what I did is to transfer this out. So we have basically, instead of this, we have this shape. And we do have this condition, which is set to default. In fact, we could even remove this triangle no wait we could no remove this resample velocity since we are already transferring the, this back on so i'm also multiplicating the velocity by a little value of 0.4 and i'm removing all these attributes which i no longer need and it could complicate a little bit the sourcing on the left side we have the ground source which this is very very interesting this part of in fact try to take down notes because you could get lost here so we have the a grid right and we also have our layer we time shift it again wherever we need it and we blast what we blast the ground and we extrude volume this a little bit on top because here we have remember the old trick we will paint where we want to emit we will scatter we will add a noise and we will remove based on this color right we have a specific point kind with that that doesn't change in this case 355,000 points we will blast everything that is inside this volume right here and we will get these points to basically lerp between each other you will see why so we have a noise only uh, as we have this noise i guess is due to something going to use later which is it shouldn't be so important anyway so we have the idea this is we all know why we use this this is to basically connect different points and, or to remember the their name and what i'm going to use here is a function called pc filter watch this closely when I, what i'm doing here is basically grabbing the overall uh, point cloud which is this one and i'm telling hey what points are you near from these points so this guy is going to say if i'm going to draw this uh, hey i'm this point my nearest point is this one hey i'm this point my nearest point is this one okay okay so if we have this we're going to say to what radius i am nearby and how many points if we have two points points for example it will look the the, the, the our point and then another point right so it's going to basically have a direction and what i'm going to use is to hey please my position which is every single point here has to be now what the position which i found on the pc filter which is basically a blur between the values i found so why do why do i make this because as you saw in this picture we will move this point over here because then we can create a simple direction uh, vector. As you can see here, I basic this is this is basically a velocity uh, set to uh, oh oh yes, I'm multiplicating the color here so it can go upwards and based on a value, right? This is always also a multiplication. How vertical do we want this simulation to go? And uh, I'm also normalizing the horizontal based on what of my first uh, position, which is the original and the position I have based on the ID 
on this one. So if I'm creating vectors based on the surface, all these are going to go to the surface. So instead of using the old trick where we have the points flowing outside from a central position, I'm doing another trick which is way better, which are the points flowing outside of this. Basically, imagine it as, an, as a normal surface. So it will be more precise in the simulation. Then I, my velocity is getting multiplied by the vertical settings I have. Uh, also by this value uh, which is basically multiplicating the overall setup now it's one so it's not doing anything and I'm adding the horizontal because I want the, the foot when it, it steps on to do like it goes outside I don't want it to go vertical but a little bit open so it can create like a, the scale and the shape of an actual foot stump I'm also multiplicating this uh, by this value the horizontal one so these two are together and these two are together I'm multiplying like it in the horizontal and the I mean the horizontal and the vertical so I can have the full control I'm also creating a simple uh, noise this is the old, the old trick and I'm also using this one to delete wherever we need and deleting all the points I need so I'm merging these two guys together I'm also doing a timeline between uh, the sources the talon and the, the foot and the simulation is basically this this one is uh, I'm inputting all the the grains this is the source back here then I'm using a pop ring with uh, 80 constraint interactions so it can handle uh, well basically the, the, the collisions a little bit better and the clamping is set to 1 and 100 so we can have uh, like when it's pressed out it's it's not random some things will go like tighter together I could use a mask for this which I didn't because I didn't see it as necessary there's nothing more here I'm basically using uh, the the old um, and trustworthy uh, sprites with I'm using a pop drag basically every single particle that is going upwards will have a resistance so it will go and stop but when it goes down the resistance will be way less because in the anime this is basically our direction it goes up stops and then it falls down even quicker and I'm also using a pop at back uh, volumes I'm using the old uh, smoke simulation to add back this so you can have a little bit more of a natural dynamic I also multiply it in this scale based on the wider direction from zero meter meters it will be zero effect and two meters is going to be an effect of multiplicating one by eight nothing else here I'm using the, the static object to load in the, the holy call uh, of the leg and a ground to the particles jump on the ground I could use the RBD that we're going to see later but I decided not to do that and nobody is going to tell and I have a simple gravity of uh, point things uh, remember uh, we can fake things uh, in order to give out a bigger scale and that's about it. Uh, my grain simulation looks something like this. We we'll have, I do have some step here, but with motion blur, you really can't tell. It will go up and it will fall down very quickly. Look at these shapes, for example. These are the shapes I was looking for. These clamps, and from the screen, it does look very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. You now the uh, velocity transfer was due to the following. You remember that I created like a certain shapes like this. Is because in the anime we will see that uh, the ground actually does that shape if I didn't have that I will have like a vertical velocity going here and then a sudden horizontal velocity here so it will split my sources like that and I want that um, to be smooth so the only way to create that is with the velocity transfer uh, based on uh, well basically the, the, the interpolation of the leg that's about it I, I create a connectivity node I don't know why I created this this doesn't make any sense I delete uh, everything but my velocity this and I group delete everything so I can oh I know why because I'm exporting these two queries so that's uh, the delete section so guys let's go into the RBD this will be very interesting and long and <laughs> very long as you can see this is the overall setup I will toggle so we can see this better the overall setup consists in many things for example the leg the leg I'm using this as a township I'm also doing the old uh, blast where I'm extruding this you know just a tiny bit in order to create a volume and on the other side I do have this grid uh, this grid also has a UB coordinates I will show you again right here we can see the, the coordinates right here and 
then I'm using uh, a null so I can load in this later and also creating some normals on vertex. It's always nice to have normals before creating a boolean. So I'm BDB reshape, I'm converting this, I'm transforming this and adding a mountain and I'm also adding normal set to vertex in order to basically, well, create this shape where it's going to be the all their direction. I set to intersect and I'm basically exporting this group and I'm setting an end chord. I'm doing the opposite, opposite uh, process of the um, of the subtracting set of the intersection and I'm transforming this a little bit here so we can extend this to the shape of the camera. As you can see this is working fine so so far. This is the main ground and this is the collision. I'm using the main ground with this uh, uh, node which is provided by one of my friends in the industry. Basically I'm creating this uh, I'm dividing. It's a, a, a subdivide. I mean it's a divide node with the brick option but it's based on the bounding box. Um, so what I do here is now to create the base um, sections of this uh, boolean. I'm going to show you the name. This is only one thing. So I'm creating the base on the foot a line which is set to the bounding box. I'm also scattering some points which randomize normals as you can see here and I do have a, a ground set with a mountain and copy to point this thing out. You would ask why? Why are you doing this? And why are you merging a horizontal line? Well, basically because I want to uh, boolean this out. I'm also blasting everything that is not inside this shape because I don't want to waste resources on these effects. This is very easy to follow and I'm basically uh, basically boolean this out with the append. I should have a, a prefix which I didn't use. I don't know why. But that is here. This out first booleans, I will import them back here and I'm going to measure. This is a simple trick. I am basically using uh, this measure uh, node set to ball in or whatever you want and then I'm using a splint function to split between, uh, you will see here, to split between a certain threshold. The threshold is set to this one. This is an old trick uh, I learned on one of the Sigma, the yeah, CGMA courses. Well, these are the big pieces and on the other side we'll have the small pieces. I will also set the name original equals to our name. And what do we have here? I will call one piece and so we can check it out. So this is one of the pieces. I'm going to remove the the, the UV effect and I'm going to explode everything that's not an A poly and uh, it's not inside. So it's the surface and I'm going to get all the edges on the, so all the sharp edges. Um, I'm also going to set this edge curve. This is a very interesting uh, labs tool. Very useful. And I'm going to scatter some points on these edges. Then I'm going to also BDB from particles and I'm going to convert this mountain it a little bit and then boolean based on this. So you, now we have the borders. I'm also going to do a little bit of a reshape and grab everything that's not I mean everything that's on the edge. I'm also including this one but I will. you will see that I will uh, set all these two edge pieces equals to one so everything that's inside this group is one everything that's outside is a zero and I will then go inside here and promote on each of the pieces uh, based on the minimum so if the minimum is zero we will see this set to zero and what I'm doing here is basically grabbing the uh, detail attribute from here and if it's one it, I will basically have this uh, the group edge pieces one and if it's zero it's going to be zero so only the edge uh, boolean pieces are going to be included and I'm going to do this on every single piece so we could in fact um, set the name or edge here and blast everything here and blasting everything that's um, on the edge as you can see these are the edge being blasted out and here I'm, I'm blasting everything I'm doing the opposite basically and I'm changing based on small and big the big are going to be fractured again and this is not the edge so this is not going to be affected by anything so I'm doing a simple run and basically doing this but I'm dividing again based on big and small I'm doing a simple uh, a simple noise here and growing any so offset with some points and then boolean this and setting this back to our original uh, position so what I'm doing here is to add a simple noise to our bottom fracture because you know that the bottom fracture is not really uh, nice to see and I'm doing this on all the pieces I'm basically merging this and actually deleting all that I, I don't need 
I'm not going to load this because it takes a while, but I'm basically deleting the rest position. So let's see how uh, it looks at the end of the day. And we do have all that's inside and all that's outside being fractured. We can see a little bit of uh, visual looks, but in the overall render, we won't see anything. I'm also assembling this to points and I'm transferring the name original right here to uh, primitives. So once we have all the fractures, we will start creating uh, a nice interaction between the pieces. So I'm going to grab this grid and I'm going to subdivide this grid. I'm also going to do grab this leg and time shift this leg. And then I'm going to do a lattice based on these two parameters. As you can see, this basically drags in and out our shape. I'm going to blur this out so it's softer. And I'm going to mask a place where I want to eat rice a little bit more. So this will be a reason a lot, as you can see here. We am also multiplicating this based on this slider. So the Y position is going up. This is basically controlling the direction of each of these pieces because I'm growing every single piece and I'm point forming it based on this lattice. So you will see this is very interesting uh, right here. So if the uh, food goes down, it will move everything upwards. And you will see, hey, why you painted this and you moved it? Because now I have more art direction. Look at this, take the notes. You will use it a lot in production. I'm painting it here and it goes a little bit up. I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to show you how it looks with the layer like that we'll go back right here so basically if I'm painting here it can go a little bit upwards and it will move all the pieces and I can obviously do the opposite if I paint with a negative value so as you can see I'm animating the step before simulating so this is the deformation and I'm unpacking everything and I'm basically grabbing the static and I'm switching okay so before this I don't want anything because I don't need the deformation now it's getting activated I change it so then I'm also doing a time shift with the frame 137 which I really like a lot and I'm switching right here because after this section the shape breaks and I don't need this to break I need this to set be set here and I'm also grabbing uh, the shape which is the first one which is the rest position and I'm blending between these two guys a little bit so it has like this motion going it's, it's barely noticeable but you will see it better here when he raises the foot the rocks go a little bit downwards so this is my whole sim simulation i'm also extracting the points based on the name so i'm packing this just in case it doesn't matter if you don't have any packed uh, primitives but what i need here is basically the name attribute of set prints and i will need this here too and i'm extracting the points because this is as you can see very heavy to load so all the points look like something like this at the end of the day it's not an a simulation it's only an animation then i'm using a transform pieces to create the movement of the low poly and I'm creating the velocities and I'm also creating what is going to be the initial status which is going to be animated and active set to zero. I'm also going to use the primitive so we can make this a little bit smaller so we don't have so much collisions to begin with. And I'm also creating this rest position based on 10, 21 and this is basically my base low ground print. Secondly what I did here is to grab the base low ground I can shift it back to our origin position and unpacked it and I did a, um, an RVD interior detail this would take a little bit but not so much and um, what I did here is to basically have the the high poly version of these rocks this might crash my PC but I will show you how it looks on the on the file cache we have down below so as you can see, everything that was not A inside B, this means that everything that is not the top will be affected by this noise, which is very, very interesting. Forget about these uh, shapes. I'm not going to see them. You will not going to see them once this is rendered. Let's go here where this is packed and let's do an exploded view. And let's watch how this looks. This looks quite nice. This is the high poly version. So let's see how it continues. Well, we need to create the cart or to bring in the cart. This is the cart, right? This is the, what I modeled and basically I'm creating a name based on the path because I exported this with path, right? So now my name has this uh, context. It's the same as path. My wrangle is going to say, okay, uh, add a cart and add uh, something based on the Itoa, basically the class name. I'm modificating this based on the uh, point count. So we have 38 pieces here. And I 
also creating this original name just in case because we're going to use them in the constraint creation uh, this is the card this is the hive i didn't do any fractures but i still created a fracture section and let's go to the to the overall uh, constraint section so this is the card right it's still not moved into place it doesn't really matter but i'm going to split between uh, this section and the the wheel because i want to control the wheel separately so i'm going to promote these two points the name and the name original i will scatter here points so i can i will going to keep the, the points with the name and the name original i'm going to connect everything based on the name and also only finding the name original so each piece is going to be like the condition so uh, i'm going to select something that i want it to be weak this is a group weak group promote weak from points to primitives why because the strength of uh of a uh, of a constraint is going always in the primitive section remember to always add the rest length attributes that's fat at this so we can split all the points and it's primitive uh, with zero scale here why because we have the points uh, basically merged so it's going to be like a like a nail on the edge of the surface let's delete a bunch of the of them with this delete with range and we will rate the constraints basically i'm going to use hard constraints here the strength is going to be one the rest length is going to be zero because now we have points we don't have a primitive value and if you are weak the strength is going to be 0.3 so you're going to be weaker i'm going to use this strength value uh, later on in dops and on the other side we will have a glue this glue is going to be set to glue strength to one if you're weak you are also going to be set to 0.3 so let's merge these two guys together remember we have more points here and let's also create a new group layer this is going to be the connection between the within everything that has to do with the wheel i'm also everything that's weak is going to be strength equal to 0 0.02 everything that's strong because i don't want this to break on the other side because i the artistic direction and the manga and the anime basically was uh, the same and i want to be uh, loyal to the anime version and well everything that's weak is 0.2 everything that's strong is 4 so on the other side i created this wheel it's the same idea scatter connect certain pieces based on name original we remember we have these points uh, here and we will facet we will prim we have the points here and we will create our heart right here strength equals one best length equals zero we will merge these two guys together now we have the two things together and we need a little, little more we need to connect the wheel with the car so let's blast um this section which is like the what makes the wheel spin and let's grab the wheel and let's only split these guys together let's merge these two so let's uh, name origin and name let's promote this again to points let's scatter let's only connect the connections here let's do the old trick and let's create a hard the strength is going to be 0.1 because i want everything to break really fast so the card will go and it falls down we will connect everything and these are the constraints of the car on the other side we have the barrels the barrels have a high version and it also have a low version right here it's a bb from polygons i'm converting this and i'm poly reducing and i'm also sending the name back into primitive so i'm this is the barrel i don't have a original name because i didn't need to make any type of complex situations here so i didn't create the constraints of the ground because i didn't need to uh, but basically i'm creating the barrel and creating the constraints here which i do not have as you can see here i don't have anything and i'm basically using an rpd pack and then an rpd impact this is only to be become more organized and also creating a melter force for these guys as you can see we have an animation that pushes this with these forces so it will move like upwards like boop, and it will fall down i'm only controlling this shape on the other hand i created the same setup for so this is one and this is the other one i did the same for the car i grab in my card and constrain it and i basically uh, have the low right here with a poly reduce on each path attribute and, or it could be named it's the same then i merge these two guys together and i move it where i want on the image just to match the, the, the scale and everything so uh, this is the card high these are the constraints and this is the low which we are going to use to simulate and i also created the same for the ground we have uh, the primitives well in fact we, we shouldn't use this it's this should be set to nothing because we do not have uh, any kind of constraint but we will leave this remember this is not correct so i'm going to delete this chest in this case so this is the low and this is the high right the high is going to be static because we're going to point the form it i mean pointer from it later we have the same setup here and we do have a solver pay attention to 
this. This is the animation. And what I'm creating, because I already have the velocity here, as you can see, is creating a threshold. Threshold based on what? On the velocity. So I grab in um, I grab in the first input and I'm saying, hey, the previous frame, did you have any active or animated piece? If so, copy it. And hey, so create me the magnitude of the velocity. And then if the position on the y axis is bigger than 0.1, and I mean, and if the y position is bigger than 0.1 or the magnitude is bigger than that certain threshold, then i equals to 1 and animated equals to 0. So I'm basically injecting this into an active state inside DOPS and then I'm copying this back again. So if you are not the edge, so uh, yes, basically, if you are not the edge, transfer these attributes. Otherwise, keep yourself at 0. I only want the small pieces to be activated and the big pieces to be art driven by me. So it will look kind of my animation that will have like some spicy things going on uh, when it comes to simulating. <clears throat> now that we're here, this is the overall setup. I will explain it a little bit more. So this is the, we can choose between the high version and the low version, right? Um, this is the, all my RBD, which I'm playing it on the left input. And on the this side, well, it's the same, but um, I'm basically just controlling with, that I want to have the, the low. I could have made this even simpler, but it's self-explanatory. So let's copy in into my top network. My top network is pretty much simple. It's basically the barrels, the ground and the cart are getting injected. These are obviously the proxies. We do not need to see anything here. We can ignore this from the time being. And we are loading in the heart. The glue are not getting lower, but we could. We could load them. I'm basically loading in based on hard and setting the guide options to zero because it's very annoying to visualize the constraints with uh, one because we have big fears. So these are the constraints and I'm creating a sub solver. Remember this, I have to RBD out constraints, everything out. So this uh, will be set where... Okay, the constraint group is basically uh, here. Out card constraints. Out card constraints because we only have these constraints. Otherwise, I would merge everything in RBD together and create a, a nucleus, like a central constraint network. So these are hard. So what I do is everything that is called hard, if your angle is bigger than the threshold, multiply by the strengths, which I previously have. So if the trench is 0.1 and we have 0.5, so it's going to be 0 0.05 but uh, multiplied by 0 0.1. So the threshold is going to be really small and if the angle is big enough, it will break. So the wheel will break first because we had the waypoint set there. That's how it is. I'm going to remove the primitive that uh, has this uh, set to like true. If this is true, it will remove the, the primitive. So now that we have that, we can focus on this sub solver. Basically, basically, basically what I'm doing here is if you uh, the, if the RBD is getting activated, this is the activator. You remember that and if we are going above uh, uh, the Y axis and the velocity is big enough, let's activate this because my original simulation, my original um, uh, ground is set to inactive, is set to, uh, to animated. So I, I have to control the, the, the animation somehow. And the way is to transfer what I created with my activator to my original piece right here. It's basically a copy and attribute. And then what I'm doing here is to, hey, if you are called cart and you are between these frames, add a little force to the left side, so a positive set, because I want to drive the cart uh, a little bit to the right. So if you are in between these shapes, between these frames, you are going to go a little bit to the left side. It's only a little art direction idea I had. I'm also going to use uh, the pop metal force from the cart, which uh, I didn't show, but it's basically the same as the, the barrels. We'll see, we have these two, and it's only going to affect the card and here is only going to affect the world and uh, we have these forces they are equal we have a drag which is 0.1 it's quite high but at this scale you won't notice and i do have a pod drag spin so the pieces don't spin a lot i do have wrangle here so it's basically hey if your uh, your point y is less than your uh, rest position y minus two then remove the point basically i do have some pieces going downwards because here we will simulate some pieces will fall down and if they go lower a certain threshold, they will get deleted right here, as you can see. This will make everything smoother, and that's about it.
Well, we also have the leg collation and we have a ground, which is basically uh, everything that's not the original RBD. Everything is set here and well, I'm basically dop inputting only the points. I'm now saving this here. So the simulation is something like this. What is this? Oh, ignore this. And I'm uh, out RBD sim here. We can ignore this because this is only a way to port to Clarice. Uh, this is using USD, which is not part of uh, the whole idea of the tutorial. So basically, I'm, these are the transform from the low poly. As you can see, it works just fine. We will use the camera. It works just fine. This is the card. It breaks. And that's about it. This is the high version. And then I'm splitting everything to the card, uh, to the ground. I'm exporting this if I, I want to have the possibility to export this to queries. But I'm also exporting everything uh, here. This was an experiment only to basically copy and transform this into Clarice. And um, this is the same thing for the low poly, but uh, what I ended up using is basically an instancer, which is quite complex, but I'm creating points and I'm also creating the, the uh, like the source inf source piece information and I'm combining this into an USD. Uh, you can see this if you need, you are probably not going to need this anyways. So this is basically my RVD simulation. I also have a, a little a little simulation, an out of debris simulation, which is like a secondary uh, emission. So how did I create this? Well, basically I am grabbing my rocks, which are this one. These are uh, the rocks and my rocks are based Based on this, it's a box which has a match size. It's also getting transformed, BDB, and I'm deforming this based on the same trick, but instead of using um, density, I'm using surface, and I'm buying exporting the, the surface here, which has a turbulent noise set to add on the position. I'm also converting this here. I'm also doing a poly reduce and a match size, so we center this. This also has a poly reduce, so we can pack this low poly version, and we can transform this set to the center, and we'll. So do the same here so we have both things uh, organized together we will have uh, uh, our ground and we will unpack this and we'll blast everything that's not the inside and we will only have the attributes we really need if this doesn't crash i deleted everything as the normal and i will remove everything based on a velocity y threshold so if uh, the, on the y you are going upwards basically you're getting deleted this is a very consuming process we have tons of geometry but this basically masking everything that's going upwards and I'm scattering points here based on the end points of the attribute triangle 23 I'm grabbing every single point I have 25,000 and I'm dividing this by 24 so we have a constant rate between the amount of geometry we have and the amount of points we are going to export we have a, a global seed of f which changes every frame and we have a p scale with these settings I'm basically having like uh, uh, tons and tons of little pieces some medium pieces and basically nothing of big pieces so it will have a lot not many and almost nothing so here i'm also doing uh i'm saving the physical proxy i'm saving this for later use and i'm saving or creating an orient attributes i'm basically creating a bunch of rocks as you can see here these are the low poly and i'm saving my orient to my own initial orient this is very important because you will see later <laughs> and i'm also saving the id of the rocks and basically creating a name and this is the same as this one so i'm grabbing the ptnam and i'm creating a underscore and also creating an integer based on the frame so each piece is going to be unique from the previous frame uh, then i'm creating a velocity good going upwards just to test but we do have a velocity we could in fact not even use this or perhaps use this which i created before which is basically a threshold based on the y velocity it's basically the same as we used before you can turn this off because we do have velocities this is uh yes we do have velocity right here if you can see this i will delete the geometry but keep the points and we will have the velocities uh, sourced by our uh, emitter so now we have all my points out of the points which are here what i'm doing here is basically simulating uh, based on my physical proxy these are the rocks which is this one this is the high and this is the low so what we used to have and i'm using this as a sourcing method so what i'm going to use is based on this rock and based on this rigid body solver emit emit with all the points i created before or all the rocks i created here so these are everything i need each frame is basically being different from the pre 
previous one and I'm instancing on the points uh, this row. Since this is packed, I'm only emitting uh, RBD geometry, RBD pack geometry. So I have all the colliders which I had before. You can see um, this is the ground, this is the car, this is the bar, this is the leg, and this is the ground, the, the uh, general ground. And you will see once this load this is quite slow, but it will just work. We have tons of emission right here, and I could easily visualize this with a display geometry. And the trick here is that once I save the points, as I teach you guys right here, there we go. Once I save this, uh, what I'm going to need is to reuse our orient points, our orient attribute that we saved right here. This is very import important because the copy the point doesn't interpret the original orientation because the original orientation in a simulation is zero. We got to get this back together. So let's time shift all the simulation to, to our last frame uh, because we want to have every single rock or every single point that's getting emitted and we're going to put uh, every single uh, point in the center and we're also recovering our piece scan. We're also cleaning the attributes because we don't want the initial orient or we don't want, uh, I mean we want to save these two guys together. Everything that's not this is going to be removed and I'm also recovering, uh, I'm also the initial orient is going to set to orient. So what the attribute we had before is going to be the original orient right now. So I'm getting the rock and I'm also setting, hey, the path is going to be rock A and basically I'm copying every single rock that's getting emitted to its original position. That's about it. So what happens when we don't have so all the pieces, right? You will see that I'm copying the name. So the name right now is uh, basically the name that's on the points because we have the same point count. But what happens when we do not have points? Because at the beginning of the simulation, we have less points, right? You know, uh, this is that was provided by the, uh, an, a friend of mine, Carson. I'm going to leave the link down below. So what happens? Uh, we need to delete this. Otherwise, it's not going to work in a uh, transfer pieces, which we need to use. So what I'm going to say, hey, I am called name uh, on, on the point one, right? Uh, on this input, I am name here. I have all the names you will ever need. This is the simulation. Here we don't have so many because we didn't exist before. Now we exist. So you're saying, hey, I do have uh, the names you need and you have the names on the old, old simulation. If we can find a match between each other, I do not exist. So remove me. So you will see at the beginning of the simulation, we don't have any points We are, and these are getting created as time goes by. So based on this, I can then uh, copy and transform the pieces as equally as it shows inside the simulation. Well, I changed something on the simulation, so it won't look equal because I used to have a um, velocity set to one on the, on the y-axis, but uh, it does indeed work at the end of the day, which is what we want. Uh, I'm exporting a point cloud uh, to Clarice and I'm exporting the overall debris alembic also as a, uh, as a new file to Clarice. These are two different methods. You can use whatever you want if you're using Clarice. And hi guys, so I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. If you need help or you have a question, please leave a comment down below. You can also join my Discord server, link down below. See ya.